прошлое воскресенье говорил, last Sunday I said, что чудный, that wonderful, это значит необыкновенный, that means extraordinary. И нарекут ему имя советник. And he will be called a counselor. Советник, counselor or an advisor. Некоторые переводы в английском языке. Some English translations say. Они соединили этих два слова в одно. They combine these two words into one. Чудный совет. Wonderful counselor. The original says of two different words. But regardless, once or I mean one word or two words. We know for certain. The scripture says through prophet Jeremiah that his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. But his ways are greater or higher than our ways. And his thoughts are greater and higher than our thoughts. That is why he resolves everything through an extraordinary way. It is not an ordinary path. So he is not asking advice of our logical mind. He says, I have my way out. He is also an advisor, a counselor. Very often we ask God for his advice. What should I do with my stubborn husband? What should I do with my wife? What do I do with my disobedient children? How should I take my health back? How do I raise my ministry? And we always need an advice. And God's advice. God's advice. Always brings good results. I want to tell you this important thought. Why us Christians? We constantly look for God's counsel. And when God gives us the counsel, we don't agree with it. Do you know that there is a reason behind this? We pray, Lord, give me an advice. Show me what to do, so to speak. What should I do? And God says it to us, whether through a word, very often during a preaching, in fact. That is why we come to the house of God. I listen to the voice that is in my spirit. And I also read the scripture. Sometimes God speaks to us through a different person. And when we hear that voice, something on the inside tells us, go. But our head, our mind, says no way. No way. Don't you even think about it. Do you know why that happens? Because God's advice is not logic dependent. God's advice always count upon your obedience. Our logic it is contrary towards receiving God's advice. Because we say, God, I don't get it. And because we don't understand it, we think, because I don't understand it, that means that is a bad advice. But the scripture says, that God's advice are wonderful. They are wonderful or full of wonder. They are full of wonder. Amazing. We go through various seasons in our life. And this year God blessed our house, our family, with a dog. It helps us walk in, in, in humbleness. The parents, that is. But it's joy for the children. And I notice how the one that has the greatest mind or more wisdom wants to help the one that, that lacks wisdom. 
кто-то один должен взять ответственность because, because за воспитание Божьего творения. И вы знаете, у нас вот Аманда, она so Amanda, Божий человек. She's a person of God. И вот Аманда имеет... So, Выше пути, нежели пути у собаки. Here is Amanda who has higher ways than the ways that of a dog. Ее мышление Her лучше, mind is собаки. better than the mind of a, of a dog. И она говорит собаке, что нужно she tells делать. the dog what the dog must do. Потому что он еще маленький. Because the dog is small. It's a puppy. А собака But this puppy doesn't understand. It doesn't understand. Why is this human telling me to do something that is contrary to my nature? Her nature, her desire, says I must do it my way. But a higher mind, that is the mind of a human, says no, this is what you must do. This is how you must act. This is where you need to go. And this is what you need to do there. And the dog is against it. The dog says, you don't love me. You don't consider my interests. You don't care about my taste in life. You don't care about my desires. The dog doesn't understand that the mind of a person, a human, sees further, understands more, and desires for better. And one day when the dog will understand, the dog will say, thank you. Thank you so much. So I thought something similar happens to us and God. God gives us his advice. And we say, God, what about my desires? What about my ways? What about... What? What about my uh, world view? And we say, God, you don't understand. I can tell you what needs to be done. And sometimes we don't want to submit to God. And we don't see that his ways are wonderful. And his advice is for our benefit. This is the point of our blessing. Every time, when God gave advice, they were incomprehensible to the mind of a human. Because we always want to understand it with our mind. But God teaches us be obedient then you'll understand we want to understand and then be obedient but God's word says first we must listen we must obey and then you will understand listen and obey then you'll understand Lord why? because in this того, что мы признаем Божий разум выше нашего Because this is the way we acknowledge his mind and his ways higher than our ways. Бог послал Илью God sent Elijah to a widow in the, in the Sarepta of Sidon. И Бог имел свой план. And God had, had his plan. Свою волю. He had his will. Которую ни Илья that neither of them understood. But Elijah walked in obedience. When this miracle took place in the life of this widow, it was not when she understood, but when she submitted, when she listened, when she fulfilled what was said. And Elijah said, woman, give me water to drink. She says, okay, I have some water. So she wants to get some water. He says, I also want some food. She says, I have nothing. I have enough food to feed the, uh, just one time. And that is only for my son and I. Imagine, I'm looking at Lily. 
у нее есть сын. She has a son. Ну, правда, у нее чудесный муж обеспечитель. Even though she has a good provider, she has а a good husband. А если бы не было мужа? What if he wasn't there? Вот у нее есть сын, которого она любит. She has a son that she loves. И кто-то говорит. And someone says, Лиля, Лили, отдай мне пищу. Give me your food. И она смотрит. She looks. Как? What do you mean? У меня пищи только для меня и моего сына. I only have раз. enough food for the both of us, and only for one time. И ты просишь, чтобы я отдала это. you're asking me to give that up? Мы бы сказали нет. We would say no. Нет, это не Бог. No, that's not God. Нет, не Бог. That's not God. Бог не забирает. God doesn't take the last food. Вы правы. You're right. Бог. God. Не забирает последнее. Doesn't take the last food. Но он ищет. But he searches. Нашего послушания. For our obedience. Ну, Господи. We say God. Вообще не логически. It's not logical. И правда не логически. And it's right, it's not. Но послушание приводит к чуду. But obedience is the guide towards the miracle. Всегда послушание приводит к чуду. Obedience leads us to the miracle. Поэтому Божьи советы. So God's advice. Они учат нас послушанию. They teach us obedience. Писание говорит. The Bible says. Книга Откровения. The book of Revelation. Третья глава. Chapter 3. Советую. I'm giving you advice. Советую. I'm advising you. Знаете, не часто Бог дает свои God советы. God doesn't give us his, his advice quite frequently. Но в третьей главе Откровения. But in the third book of Revelations, he says. Он говорит, я советую. I'm giving you an advice. Советую. An advice. Какой же Бог дает нам совет? What advice has God given us? Three things. Я советую. I'm advising you. Номер один. First of all, приобретайте золото. Get gold. Золото. Get gold. Вы знаете, я сегодня, когда смотрел, Today when I looked, и хочется сказать, I want to say, ой, вот эта красота. This is, is beauty. Это же как золото. It's like gold. Вот посмотрите, как оно блестит. Look at how it sparkles. Мне даже кажется, I think even, что золото меньше блестит, вот, как вот, вот, that вот gold это shines less than this right here. И мы вот смотрим. And we look at it. Ну, золото. Gold. Вот просто золото. Just gold. Но часто люди говорят, But very often people say, все то золото, что блестит. That not everything that is shiny is gold. Вы знаете, золото, gold, оно представляет собой ценности. Represents a store of value. Ценности. Value. И Бог говорит, And God says, ты думаешь, you think, ты думаешь, you think, я богатый, I'm rich, я разбогател, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I gained riches, я ни в чем не имею нужды, and I have no need. Говорит, и ты даже не знаешь, and you don't even know, что ты несчастный, that you are poor. Ты жалкий. That you are miserable. Ты бедный. You are very poor. И, и ты, и ты раздетый, наги. And you're naked. А вот ты думаешь о себе совсем And иначе. you think of yourself highly. И что вот делает эту разницу? So what, what is the difference here? Почему огромная разница? Why is there such a big gap? Вы знаете, я могу думать сам себе. I can think to myself. Какая у меня красота. That I am so pretty. Ой, сколько у меня вот всего красивого. I have so much beautiful stuff. Значит, that means я богатый. I am rich. Я успешный. I am successful. Почему? Why? Потому что у меня есть так много хороших Because вещей. Because I have so many things that are pretty looking. Они могут выглядеть весьма хорошо. They can look really good. Но не обладать никакой ценности. Yet they possess no value. И Бог смотрит очень часто на нас. And God looks at us. Говорит, у тебя все хорошо. He says, you're doing fine. Но у тебя неверные ценности жизни. But you have the wrong values in your life. Поэтому That is why ты имеешь много. You have a lot. Но ты but нищий. You're poor. Советуй. I'm advising you. Советую. Giving you an advice. Какой же Бог дает нам совет? What advice has God given us? Я советую. I'm advising you. Приобрести тебе золото. Get some gold. Другими словами. In other words, приобретай мои ценности. Get my values. Измени change свои ценности на Божьи ценности. Your values for God's values. Вы знаете, у кого дети занимаются спортом? If your child is athletic то всегда мама и папа имеют or, о чем говорить. Or they play sports. Moms and dads always have something to talk about. 
Когда дети, к примеру, занимаются музыкой, when children are into music, то уже другие, как бы, знаете, друзья становятся. Then, then you have different types of friends. Или если человек занимается определенным бизнесом, or if the, if the person is doing a certain type of business, он находит подобного себе. He finds those that are likened unto him. То есть у них много чего общего. They have a lot of things in common. То есть ценности нас соединяют. That means our values are bringing us together. Потому что часто люди говорят. Because very often people say, а о чем я с ним буду говорить? What, am, what are we going to talk about? Ну о чем? What are we going to talk about? У нас нету ничего общего. We have nothing in common. И вот часто мы приходим к Богу. And very often we come to God. Господи, я тебя люблю. Lord, I love you so much. Господи, я хочу твоего присутствия. Lord, I want your presence. Я хочу твоего благословения. I want your blessing. И Господь говорит, давай. And Lord says, amen. Давай мои ценности. Let my values. Моё золото. Let my gold. Мои интересы. My interests. Пусть станут твоими интересами. Let them become your interests. И у нас будет много чего общего. And we're going to have a lot of things in common. И мы будем говорить об одних и тех же вещах. And we're going to talk about the same things. We say, Lord, are you serious? You don't want to talk about fake stuff? God says, no. I'm only interested in something that is genuine value. So when we get God's values, what happens then? We become closer to God. And God comes closer to us. How do you know the values of God? They're all described in the word of God. They're all there. And when we read and when we read the scripture again and again, again and again, again and again, one day God will speak to us. I read Pastor Yonggi Cho, he said, when I started the church, our country was in destruction. After the civil war, the country divided. There was Buddhism in the country. No one believed in Christianity. There was no welfare. There was great poverty. There is no help. And I had to preach to them the gospel that will bring them change here on the earth. It was not enough to tell them everything will be fine in heaven. When you go home, you don't have any welfare or pension. You don't, yeah, you don't have any government pensions. You don't have any kids that are going to bring you food. Yet you come to church and you cannot hear that word. Everything will be fine because the first of the month came. But the check from the government didn't come. Imagine just for, for a glimpse what do you need then? You need a practical word. And Pastor Yonggi Cho says, I preach to the people and I said, in the word of God, there is always an answer. Let God's values become your values. And he started preaching that in my church there is going to be the blessing of God. There is going to be a lot of multi-millionaires we're going to have a lot of money in the church. And when the person has nothing, it sounds unreal. But there were people that were found that started believing what the scripture said. One of them is a very poor person. Didn't have anything. He understood. I need to come home and I need to read the word. Because pastor said through the word of God the blessing will come. And as always we read the New Testament starting from the book of Matthew. You guys too as well? Yes. Matthew and Genesis. Everyone knows Matthew and Genesis. So he started reading and he's reading you are the light to the world because a city on a hill cannot be hidden and then he reads you 
are the salt of the earth. And he stopped. He hears the word of God. He hears God's advice. You are the salt. You're the salt. And this poor individual says, God, how am I salt? I'm poor. I have nothing. And God says, no, you are salt. Right now, you're salt. And the person says, I understand I probably should help people. And the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 no. You are the salt. My word says you're salt. He says, I'm salt. Yes, you are. You're the salt. You must be the spiritual salt and the physical salt. He says, Lord, so what, what must I do? And God says, you're salt. So should I open a business with salt? And the Holy Spirit says, yes. This person runs to church. Pastor! Pastor! pastor I got an answer from God. And the pastor, pastor says, praise God. What's the answer? Holy Spirit says, I'm the salt. I'm salt. And the Holy Spirit said, I must sell salt. And pastor Богу. says, praise God. I'm ready to pray for you. Congratulations. He says, hold on. That's not all. I have no money. I don't know what to start with. Pastor. Pastor. Give me $10 for the beginning. And the pastor says, oh, I don't have money too. It was a lot of money. And he thought, Lord, why did you send him to me? Where am I going to get that $10? But he stood there and he said, Holy Spirit, told you this definitely. Are you sure? He says, Pastor, yes, he did. I'm the salt. He says, fine, take my... Take my $10. And I gave that $10. It was so hard to believe. It was easier to preach than to give the money. But I gave the money, he says. And today, that person controls 30% of the all salt sold in the South Korea. He's a multi-multi-millionaire. And he's a big blessing to the church. Because he believed of the Lord's advice. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. If God has an advice, he has an advice for you. If God has an advice for your situation, God has an advice in your dead end. God has a counsel for your sickness. He has an advice for your family. He always has an advice. Maybe it's not logical. Maybe you don't understand why, but that advice will change your life forever. One of the pastors says how he uh, served all across the world. He's a professional singer. He traveled the world, but he had a problem. His own son, he grew up in rebellion. In a great rebellion. And he manifested that rebellion many times. And he said, when I came home once, we were in the kitchen, and we were eating something. And my son acted very rudely to my wife with his own mom, openly, very rude, and he put her down. He said, I felt that this is the end. I have no more patience and no more love. I understood. That's it. This is it. And I told him, go to your room. I'm going to come up there. He says, I took a belt. And I knew that I'm going to discipline him very harshly. Because in the way that he acted, it does not fit in the frame mind of a person nor God. 
И он говорит, я пришел полон гнева. He said, I came there with anger. Потому что, говорит, это было стыдно. Because it was embarrassing. И, говорит, и когда, говорит, я ему сказал, and when I told him, становись на колени. Get on your knees. Снимай свои штаны. Take off your pants. И он снял штаны, стал and на колени. Did. И говорит, я взял ремень. He said, I took the belt. Говорит, я уже I замахнулся. He said, I swung it back. И вдруг Дух Святой and говорит, and now the Holy Spirit spoke. Не ударяй его. Says, don't hit him. Себя ударь. Hit yourself. И он говорит, это было непонятно. He said, was, it, I, I couldn't comprehend it. Why me? Говорит, я привык ходить в послушании Святого Духа. But I was used to walking in obedience to him. Говорит, и тогда со всей силы. That's why with all of my strength. Как я хотел ударить As I wanted to hit my son. Говорит, я ударил себя. He said, I swung back and I hit myself. Говорит, я настолько сильно ударил себя. I hit myself so hard. Что я сам закричал от боли. That I screamed from pain. Говорит, и сын повернулся. And the son turned around. Говорит, я был злой. And I was angry. Я сказал, повернись назад. I said, turn away. He said, I swung back again to hit my son. And the Holy Spirit again said, hit yourself again. And I hit myself again. And the son turned around. He said, I was angry. I said, turn away from me. I swung back again to hit him. And the Holy Spirit said, hit yourself. And he said, I hit myself. And I felt pain. And I didn't understand what's going on. I came to discipline my son. And the Holy Spirit says, punish yourself. And after the third strike, the son started to cry and said, Dad, why are you hitting yourself? You did everything right. You're right. I need punishment. I deserved it. Don't punish yourself. Punish me. And at that time, the Holy Spirit said, this is the time when you're going to tell your son about the true love of a father. Why did Jesus come? Because the Son of God, he came to take upon himself our sin and our punishment. Because a child is born, a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Sometimes we say, Lord, save my son, save my daughter, save my finances, my ministry. And the Lord oftentimes gives us an answer, and that answer doesn't fit in our frame of mind, but obedience, the obedience to the Holy Spirit, it will always yield the right result. Maybe today you think, I celebrated the birthday of Jesus many times. I heard these names. The Lord doesn't just want you to hear the names. He wants you to experience his extraordinary ways, his advice in your life. And when your mind will fight against it, you say, Lord, you're a counselor, and I trust your counsel. I trust your advice. This father says, I told my son, about the love of Jesus, about his sacrifice, and about his resurrection. And right there, the both of us, we, stand, we stood on our knees. He prayed a prayer of repentance. He received Jesus. And today he's in ministry with me. I used all of my ways and I didn't get anywhere with it. But God's advice, God's advice yields the right result.